last of the old bodyguards of our masters served through the war between the states. And we have been to all the reunions and they have treated us just the same as any other soldier. I'm Mama Duke, Joe Shelter, bodyguard. Done everything they told me to do. And, uh, so one day, Mama Duke, General Mama Duke told me to go and get some things. I told him I didn't know what's going on. He said, I've got his gun, look like I'm ready. Chaps on there. I told him, yes, sir, I'll, I'll go right now. <laughs> well, you all know how old I am? I'll be 81 years old the first day in August. Stand with me. One of the most famous generals in the Confederate Army was Major General Nathan Bedford Forrest. He had 45 slaves whom he took from his plantation to serve with him during his command. Probably one of the most elite units in the Confederate military was Nathan Bedford Forrest's cavalry, and specifically one of his units, his own escort company. These were essentially the Green Berets of the Confederate cavalry. They were handpicked, the best troops. Uh, they were put into this escort company, and uh, when the fighting really got uh, down to the wire, Forrest would put in his escort company to basically carry the day. Of these hand-picked men, about 20% of them were black cavalrymen, that these were some of the bravest, uh, some of the best shots, uh, some of the just um, uh, most fearsome men that uh, the Confederate cavalry had, and uh, these, these black and white troopers formed this elite group of Forrest's escort. Uh, Forrest was a major slave trader prior to the Civil War. Uh, his attitude towards black was one, at best, of paternalism. Uh, he viewed blacks as property. Uh, after the war, he viewed blacks as having a particular place in society. And after Reconstruction was over, he actually worked through the Democratic Party to bring black voters in this area into the fold of the Democratic Party. So if anything, he was a man of his times in this area of the country. My great-grandfather, as a Union soldier here on April 12, 1864, faced uh, black Confederate soldiers under the direction of General Nathan Bedford Forrest. He was also wounded here, and I don't know whether he was wounded by a black Confederate soldier or a white Confederate soldier, but I know he was wounded and he was captured here and from April the 12th, 1864 until October the 31st, 1865. That is when he returned back to his unit. I think fundamentally, Forrest was a pragmatist. While slavery was a legal institution, he was willing to uh, use the system and benefit from the system. When the war was over, he recognized slavery was through, that it was never coming back, and he went about trying to rebuild his fortune. Forrest addressed uh, some of the black citizens of Memphis after the war and told them that um, the war was over and that he would advise them to do the same thing that he advised the men who fought with him, and that was to become good citizens and to vote. He said, I will not tell you how to vote, but vote. He was a pragmatist. People don't realize that and too infrequently give him that credit when it comes to issues particularly involving slavery. They say he was good to his slaves for one reason. The old dollar sign. That way uh, he get more for them, you see, and get more out of them on his plantations. Well, that's half truth, too. I mean, he was good to his slaves. But he was also good to them because he was a humanitarian. Um, on a large plantation such as Forrest Ran, about the only records you get are things that deal with how much food was issued or what kind of work is expected. 
and the sorts of things that deal with person-to-person -person relationships are very hard to come by. The one thing that um, I can tell you from a historical val uh, historically valid point is that at the beginning of the war when Forrest raised his own regiment, he recruited 42 uh, of his own slaves and said, drive wagons for me, drive ambulances for me. At the end of the war, if the Union wins, you'll be free. If the Confederacy wins, I will set you free. During the course of the war, one deserted, the other 41 were with Forrest at the end of the war. I suppose that tells you something about the force of his personality. That does not necessarily directly answer your question, but it certainly tells you that he was a man that was able to win the allegiance of people. I said to 45 colored fellows on my plantation that they would go with me. If we got whipped, they would be free anyhow. And if we succeeded, they would act faithfully with me to the end of the war, I would set them free. Eighteen months before the war closed, I was satisfied that we were going to be defeated. And I gave those 45 of them their free papers for fear I might be called. General Nathan Bedford Forrest, 1865. After the war, 20 of the 45 formal slaves went home with Forrest, including his longtime valet, Jerry, whom the other body servants nicknamed the General. Seeing that he was in charge of them all, another body servant who served in Forrest's army was Wright Whitlow from Kentucky. Wright was by Forrest's side when he attacked Fort Pillow on April 12. 1864. I witnessed the battle of Fort Pillar, and at one time during the battle, I held the horse of General Forrest while I mounted a new one after the first one was shot out from under him. Wright Whitlow, bodyguard, General Forrest, Confederate Cavalry. 